Sound insulation testing is routinely required in building acoustics practice. The purpose is to quantify the performance of a partition between two rooms in terms of its ability to prevent the transmission of sound from one room into another. I'm going to be demonstrating a method described in part one of BS EN ISO 16283. Today we're going to be doing a sound insulation test and we're going to be uh, measuring the sound insulation across this partition over here. It's a folding partition and at the moment you can see it is open. Um, I'm going to be closing it and we're going to be running the test from this room here, the source room, to the adjacent room on the other side of the partition and that's going to be called the receiving room. Now we're in the source room now and it is the larger of the two rooms and this is normal to test from the larger to the smaller of the rooms when you're doing sound insulation testing. This is the loudspeaker I shall be using. It has um, 12 uh, 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 speaker drivers on all the different sides so it's going to be emitting the sounds um, omnidirectionally in all directions. The way that the test is run is that we generate noise using the speaker in the source room here we were going to measure that noise using this um, sound analyzer or sound level meter it might be called uh, and this is measuring in third octave bands and af after we've measured the sound pressure level in this source room we're going to walk to the, um, the receiving room which is adjacent making sure we've closed all the doors behind us of course and we're going to do a measurement in there so then we're going to have a source sound pressure level measurement and a receiver sound pressure level measurement. And the result is really just a, almost as simple as a difference between the two. Take one from the other and you get the result. But we also need to do a couple of other measurements. Um, we're going to need to measure the background noise in the receiving room and we're going to also need to measure the reverberation time in the receiving room. So I'll show you how we're going to do that in a second. But let's do the sound pressure level measurements first. For the sound source, I'm using a pink noise signal, which has equal energy in each third octave band. Each sound pressure level measurement is a 30 second average. Here, I am manually moving the microphone along a slanted circle path in order to sample the noise over different points in the room. The sound pressure level is very high, so hearing protection is definitely required. That's the first measurement done. Now we need to ensure that the difference between any adjacent third octave bands is not more than eight decibels in the source room. So I'm just checking this now. OK, none of the adjacent third octave bands differed by more than 8 decibels, so it's time to do our measurement in the receiving room. For the receiving room, I'm using the same averaging technique, that is, moving the microphone slowly over a slanted circle path. OK, so we've now got a sound pressure level measurement in the source room and in the receiver room. And we're now going to want to repeat the test for a different loudspeaker position. So I'm just going to move the loudspeaker and we will rerun the test again.
I need to check again that no two adjacent third octave bands differ by more than 8 decibels. They don't, so I'm going to continue to do the receiving room sound pressure level measurement next. Okay, so there's actually quite a bit of noise coming through this partition, so we're going to have a little listen to see where we think it might be coming through the most. Um, so let's go over to it. So if we listen carefully, we can find out that a lot of noise is coming through these gaps here in the partition, and also at, at the floor when the partition is not properly sealed against the floor. In this room, we can also see that there's, there's some pipe penetrations up here. So uh, these need to be designed carefully so that we don't get sound that leaks through this gap here. All rooms have a certain amount of background noise. And sometimes, when we're trying to measure the sound coming through a partition, the partition has such a high sound insulation value that the values that we're trying to measure are actually of similar magnitude to the inherent background noise levels in that room. That makes it really hard to actually come up with a, a proper value, a reliable value for the sound insulation of that partition. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to take a measurement of the background noise so that we can compare it against the noise that was coming through the partition. When we do the background noise measurement, we need to include the sound that we may have made with our bodies uh, making that measurement itself. There may have been maybe slight scuffing of your feet or rustling of clothing, although we would have to try and keep that to a minimum. So we need to include the environment exactly as it was when we took the measurement, minus the sound from the loudspeaker, of course. Okay, so here we go. Great, so that's all done. Um, in terms of what the background sources are, there's, there's some drips at the moment from because it's raining outside that I can hear. There's also um, some fan noise from, from this heating unit over here. So there are a few bits of um, background noise which could interfere. Because the sound pressure level in the receiving room is also a function of its own acoustic environment in terms of the echoes, the reverberation, we need to take account of that. And we do that by taking a measurement of the reverberation time. The way that I'm going to do it is to use an interrupted noise method. I will be playing some noise out of the speaker and it will be interrupted and the sound level meter is going to measure the decay in sound from that point of interruption and we'll be able to determine the reverberation times from that. I will be using one loudspeaker position and six microphone positions with two measurements at each of those positions. So, with my ear defenders at the ready, I'll get cracking. I'm going to fast forward through the other measurements, just to save you some time.
Right, so we now have values for the source sound pressure level, the receiver room sound pressure level, the receiver room reverberation time, and the receiver room background noise. You will have all of the data provided for you in the form of a spreadsheet. We should have everything we need to calculate the sound insulation value. To do that, we will need to use ISO 717 part 1. Good luck and I hope you've enjoyed this video.